of nature is that one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the one and only Tenny, the entertainer, here in the studio with us. Singer, songwriter, all round multifaceted creative in the music industry. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Makanaki Great. herself. How do you call it? Eshi Makanaki. Eshi Makanaki. Eshi Makanaki. <laughs> Good to have you. Nice, thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. All right. But you just have to do that intro of that line. You know, just do a line or two inside that your song before we enter the Which one? Fajin. Fajin, yes. Hello, jiggy, jiggy. Hello, heavy, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank Let's you. talk about your work. We're looking at your meteoric rise, you know, in the entertainment industry. Last year, the tenny I saw last year is not the tenny you are Hallelujah. today. Like, in the past one year, there's been a massive growth. So first of all, congratulations thank on you. that. Thank you. Tell us about the very first time you started this journey. How did it all begin? Um, it was just a young girl passion. I just really was hungry for success. And I knew music was my only way out, so I decided to follow it. And from there, I went to school in America. Um, because of music, I didn't graduate on time. So I knew that, okay, I, had, I have to do this. Start um, in school, university. And you also, you also song, right? Yes. And you wrote David Doe's Like That. Yes. And honestly, when I found out, I was like, whoa, because, I mean, it's a hit. And he put it out there and he was trying to bring young people up. What right. influenced that? Like, what, what stemmed your passion in that song? What made you write that song? Well, I don't always write about my experiences. Because if you hear the song, can I see it your body? I don't drink. So, but when I was in the studio, there was like a Hennessy bottle on the table people were drinking and I just turned back and I just used what's around me because with songwriting you don't always write about what's going on in your life you also write about what's going on in society what's going on in other people's lives and that way you can speak to people because you don't know who, who's going through something at the moment so that's what happened speaking about songwriting it does seem that we don't quite have a culture of songwriting in Nigeria yes. I mean when you put out there that you wrote the song some mm -hmm. people came for oh, you asking people. you why did you come out to say right. you wrote that song right. So, um, and you've lived in America as well. Uh -huh. Give us a distinction between what it's like there and what it's like here. And how were you able to deal with the criticisms when they came for you? I was actually excited because it, it means I'm doing something right. You know, I'm educating people. In America, I, I just actually got a DM from an artist I wrote for. She's under Sony. And, you know, I'm doing my thing and I'm also teaching young girls like me, hey, stand up. If you wrote it, say you wrote it, accept your ghostwriter, but that's also another avenue for people to make money, songwriting. And a lot of people don't know about that in Nigeria. So I feel like that exposed people to it and say, hey, okay, so this is another avenue. I don't, or I don't have to be the artist if I can't produce, but if I'm really good with words. writing and words, this is another avenue for me. And it gave a lot of people confidence. If for a young girl like me to come out and say, I did this, I'm, I'm very sure it gave a lot of people confidence. Very true. And who would you say is your biggest influence in the music industry? Dio to me. I think she knows. She <laughs> knows. I don't well, know. King Guasio and Dio Marshall. <laughs> you actually do a lot of his. I think you've done a few of his covers as well. You like to use his Yes, beats. yes, yes, yes. Sort of. Come on. I love. If I, I listen to Come On, I, I can drive from Atlanta to New York 10 hours to Come On. Message. At the end of the day, you know, that you're probably going to have that influence, if you don't have it already, on some people who will drive us to listen to you. Yeah. But let's talk about the fact that you have a sibling who's also in the industry. <laughs> How does it feel that your sister is also in the industry? You know, does it have any, has it paved any ways for you? Oh, yes. Has it opened any doors for you? And tell us about it. Um, some people just, are just like, oh, you're new, your last sister, oh my God. And they're probably a little bit nicer. I don't know. But I'm, I'm really excited for what she's done and how well she's doing. But people like people would be nicer to me because I'm her sister. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and let's speak about your brand and how you've developed your brand. I think I was reading an interview that you had with another media house, and they were speaking to you about how often at times women are told that they have to sexualize themselves in the media and put out this front in order to succeed. And everybody who knows Tenny as Tenny the Entertainer knows that you stand very far away from that. You're not. You're unconventional in that sense. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying here? How do you how do you influence your brand and how do you ensure that you keep to what you believe in and not what the industry says? Well, just knowing who you are first. You have to know who you are. You have to know where you're coming from. And you have to be very confident in what you have and what you have to offer. So everybody told me, ah, you have to uh, 
wear this. You have to go lose weight. You know, as long as I'm healthy, I go for my checkup. This is how I am. I'm, I'm happy with her. I look at the mirror and I'm very happy with who I am. That's all that matters. Yeah. I'm just living my best life. Because every time I, I hear somebody dies, I actually went to a funeral and I, act, I knew the woman and I saw her just laying there lifeless. And I said, ha, ah, so this is how somebody is when they die. No, no, from that day, I'm going to live my life. I'm not going to care about what any other person says or thinks. I'm going to do me. And that's from there, I'm just, I just continue enjoying myself. How have you been able to deal with social media pressure? It's a follow-up of this question. Now, beyond the fact that you've been able to get to a point where you understand that your primary, your own responsibility, your joy and your happiness is primarily, primarily your own responsibility. We live in an era where I say to Leila that sometimes I'm afraid to bring up a daughter in this generation because we're in a generation that tells you that you're not pretty without makeup, mm -hmm. you have to look a certain mm -hmm. way. And we're in a generation of keyboard gangsters. So people just feel they come mm -hmm. on your social media and say all sorts of rubbish. How do you deal with social media criticism and the pressure that comes with it? First of all, life is how you choose to see it. This table is black. If I choose to see it white, I choose to see it white. You can't tell me any other thing. So I don't care about what people say. I don't even, I don't feed into negativity. See, my mind, my space, my mental health, I take those things very seriously. I will not, I refuse to let anybody make me feel worse. So I don't even pay attention to it. It's when you're paying attention to it that it will affect you. But if you don't pay attention, sometimes I'll see some comments and smile. Do you delete and block? Delete and block, no. I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have time for that. I know, see, you have to know who you are. If you know who you are, there's nothing anybody will tell you that will upset you. Yeah. Because you know, good. you know who you are. How long did it take you to write fake jersey? Freestyle. Yeah. Was it freestyle? The that whole was thing? a freestyle. You didn't, so you didn't write anything at all? Apart from the second verse where I had to go record the full song because people wanted the song. But the one I did on my Instagram was a freestyle. Let's go back to 10 years as a little girl. Mm. What was growing up for you like? Interesting. I feel like that's why I turned out the way I am. I grew up in a very, very loving environment. My mother always made me feel special. In fact, my mother would tell you, you are the best, you know? So that built my self-confidence. Growing up with my elder sister, Nini, they were very protective of me. So I grew up with so much love. Amazing, and I had the best childhood. And what influenced your music, your decision? Because now it's you and your sister. I know mm -hmm. one of your parents is into music as well, right? No. None of them? No. So where did you pick it from? Where did you and Niniola pick it from? I feel like they said my grandma had a really wonderful voice. So maybe that's where we picked it from. But we, we, we were in the school band. And we would come home. They didn't let us go anywhere. So we were always bored. So we always sing in the corridor. And you'd just be hearing, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> we, really, we, we only had each other. Yeah. Now, let's see another side to you. Aside from music, what else are you interested in? Business. Charity. Um... What tech? Tech. Tech. I'm really interested in tech right now. Interesting. Tech Why? or ah. Because <laughs> <laughs> as a musician, you're exposed to a lot of people. And besides the music, there are a lot of opportunities. You can branch into different avenues of streaming and, and my parents always taught me about business since I was young, so I think that's something very important. We need to infuse teaching oh, yes. our young people entrepreneurship from a very young age. Do you know my mom will make me arrange her wardrobe and say I will pay you 20 naira. So I've learned how to work since I was young. I've learned how to make money. I've learned, okay, this is your change. Just, I've learned things like that growing up. So parents out there should teach their kids. Because you can go to school, but you also have to know your change, your... All those things, your money. So what would you say has, has been the catalyst in your career? We know that, first of all, you became viral on social media. Uh -huh. Who was the first person to pick that video you did? African Ape. And I always message him from time to time saying thank you. Oh. Shout out to African Ape. So thank you very much, Dami, for all that you have done. Oh, you know him, Dami? Yes. Okay, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> thank you. He's African been, Ape. He's been on our show as well. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, nice, we've nice. had him. So thank you very much for being the first. Now, this is why we say the power of social media cannot be underestimated. 
just one retweet and before you know it, you went viral right. and now you're a household name. So what would you say at the different stages of your career growth so far, what would you say have been the significant changes that you've experienced? Um, not being able to like just freely go out. I still go out. But like, I, for example, I was going home and I came down to buy something from, I, I, I was buying gas and I wanted to buy something from the snack. You know where you get, go get gas from the gas station and you go buy snacks from inside. And Agbeiros just came, and they wanted to call their money. And I was like, they say, I don't know your face. They were singing, wait. I was like, so I had to give them money. But besides that, nothing, nothing. I, I don't really go out like that, so. Yeah. Now, you said that you take your mental health very seriously. Oh, yes. Is that because you've had challenges in that aspect, or because you don't want to ever experience those challenges because you know how deep they are? I don't want to. I don't want to experience those. Because I've seen people like... Whitney Houston, I've seen people that have been there and, you know, so I'm very, very careful. I learn from people's experiences. I don't, I don't want to... Um... What would you say is your greatest fear of being in the entertainment industry and what is your greatest hope? So two questions in one. Okay. Greatest fear and your greatest hope. Well, my greatest fear is not being able to touch lives as much as I want to. Because for me, music is a weapon. You know, being able to do music for people to listen, it's actually a gift. So I want to do all that God has sent me to do. That's my greatest fear. My greatest hope is to take the music beyond and above the four corners of Africa, to be able to win Grammys, to show the world that there's a lot of talent in Africa. You know, and Africa is actually where everything started. Africa is where it started from. So to show the world that, hey, Africa is a hot soil, don't mess it us. And how would you describe your sound? Good music. Would you're you not, ever put yourself exactly. in a genre or you'd keep I don't yourself have any away? Genre. I just do good music. <laughs> I'm just enjoying myself. Yeah. I'm not I'm not disturbing myself. I'm not, I'm enjoying myself. If I want to sing Akbala today, I'll sing Akbala. If I want to sing Fuji, I'll sing Fuji. I don't have one particular sound. So music, you just music. do good music. That's your genre. Good music. And we're joining our faith with you and our belief with the fact that you said you want to win a Grammy because we know you have all it takes to win a Grammys. Grammy. Grammys. Grammys. And this is not even wash. Like, you're really, really talented. Hey. And we're looking forward to the day when you, to the day when you win your Grammy Amen. or the first of your Grammys that we can all repost on social media. Oh, and they need to save this interview. So that yes, we, definitely. I'm it's going up on you, YouTube. You know? The moment you're winning, I'm going down there to oh, film see. it. I'll post it on And Instagram. Oliver and I are claiming it now. You will win Amen. Grammy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Now, speaking about writing your songs and doing the kind of music that, the good music that you do, would you say that you're sometimes influenced by what consumers want as opposed to what you want to give? Yeah, I do what I want to give. Like, for example, Wait was influenced by the death of my father. I, my father died when I was two years old, so I always watch his funeral every time I want to get motivated. So I, my mom was crying and when they were putting him down. So my mom was crying and she was saying, my Lord, you know, this is not how we planned it. I, I just I can't take your pain away. So wait to influence my personal experience. Askamaya, I drove by one place called Askamaya and Askamaya came up. So I'm just influenced by things that happen around me. Who knows? Just maybe when Tenny leaves the studio, Olive and Leila would have inspired oh, her to write another <laughs> piece. You know, we're looking forward to all the amazing things. What should we expect from you in the future, in the nearest future? Well, album. EP next year, by God's grace. But just dropping singles and shows and things like that. Well, we certainly do wish you all the best. Thank and you. to be honest, we also thank you because you've literally given us so much good music in the past year, two Aww. years. And honestly, it's amazing to watch your growth. Very How refreshing, can people follow actually. you? You know, how can people follow you on social media if they want to find out some more? Well, at Tenny Entertainer on Instagram, YouTube. Okay. Ah, on, more on, sing for on, us. On YouTube, Tenny Vivo. Okay. But on Instagram, Twitter. You must hope you know you're going to sing for us before okay. we wrap up. You have to do something for us from Wits. We need, we need that We need voice. to hear your vocals. <laughs> yeah, from Wits? Yes, yeah, just maybe two okay. lines before we throw it to the video. Uh, hey, I can't take your pain away. Yeah, but I can't make you feel better. No, if you stay another day, yeah, yeah. We can do it together, say. From sundown to sundown, 
We go what to walk together. Uh, we go do the do forever. From sun I like that backup. That's how many you, know, right? you gave me. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.